so yeah, we've, we've winched here quite a bit. Um, take the boat out, put the winch up in a pulley, hope it doesn't hook on the cable. Yeah, no, it was just crazy because every time we'd set something up, we'd all go kick her to the bank and then you'd just go through the roof and go like the lake. <laughs> it changed everything. I mean, from the different setups, this is where, this is where Graham went, went ham. Joy always promised when she was pregnant that yes, she was having another boy and um, had four wonderful daughters after that. So Graham was the big brother uh, for four siblings. We were really active. We were never like chilling on the couch. Whatever we could do to, um, you know, let them take good chances and have fun, and and uh, we wanted wanted that environment around here. So I was a crazy, cautious mother and. Then he changed that <laughs> with all his crazy stunts along the years. <laughs> Bikes um, with skateboards, trampoline. Bike trails that turned into motorcycle trails. We have neighbor kids that aren't allowed to play here because they got hurt, but that's okay because uh, we, we just let them have fun. It would have been when I was maybe around like 11 or 12. Um, my dad came home with two wakeboards at one point and said, we're gonna figure this out. And, and so I just went to like Hearn Marine up here and I bought two boards. I bought one, a Voyager for him, and I bought a Murray for me. And we went to the lake and said, we're gonna figure it out. I mean, spending like, you know, eight hours a day or whatever it was on the boat together as a family, like kind of taught us all to put up with each other were some of the best times of my life. Skateboarding and wakeboarding were definitely the two things that I uh, found myself clinging to the most. Um, just like to find a way to like fill a void that I was craving, uh, just to be creative and to do something different. Skateboarding definitely like perfectly filled that void. There's maybe two or three skateboarders that we um, like had a little crew um, around like 2002 or something. The uh, Lawrenceburg built a skate park and a skate shop opened up um, and it just like gave us all a place to all kind of come together, hang out when we weren't skating, uh, gave us a crew to film with, just turned into Blacklist. When we were trying to find a name for the shop, we were kind of thinking like, who are we, you know, what, what, what are we about? And we were kind of the outcasts, you know, as, as most skateboarders are, but we didn't really fit into, you know, the scene. We kind of just did our own thing. And uh, so we're kind of like, hey, we're like the blacklisted kids or the outsiders. Yeah, I mean, it's just like so instrumental in growing up and like having a crew and like an image to belong to. I mean, I can't explain like how much it did for me. Being blacklisted doesn't have to be something so negative. Um, we just kind of said, hey, you know, this is who we are, this is what we're about. Like, let's, let's be proud of it. So yeah, here we are. Dude, so like a couple of times for sure, I would like get thrown towards this way and somehow I'd get my hands on here and then I would just like, like one of those <laughs> i guess i still got it yeah man this spot was like definitely like a turning point for me like i'd always been like trying to skate bigger and bigger stuff and after skating this thing and like how much it scared me it really like kind of drove me to like find something else i could do to like go big but not have quite the consequences of like concrete and skateboarding and it's like wakeboarding fit in so nicely there because i was able to like send it twice or three times as big and, and you know land straight on my head into the water and just like it was so forgiving as far as like being able to hop right back on the cable and not end up in the hospital after something didn't work out so definitely a big turning point for sure. The cable park opening in 2009 was a super big thing for me. Uh, prior to that, I hadn't even uh, ridden a wakeboard on rails ever before. And so like that first feeling, like I just got so hungry for it and just wanted to ride and ride and ride and progress as much as I could. You could just hear when Graham was on the water, but the sound of him riding was pretty impressive. It's like 10 or nothing. If, if Graham's not riding like full out, He's not on the cable. Yeah! Shortly after Graham moved down to BSR, we built the buy level um, and we started filming on it. And I don't think the world really knew um, who Graham Burris was before that edit. 
at BSR and the bi level. He pushed, pushed the sport to a whole new level. Um, I think a lot of riders at the time uh, were blown away with uh, his style of riding. And I mean, just after that, he traveled to the Philippines um, where another edit came out, um, another one that was unique. And then just to see his uh, sponsorships and stuff, everything started rolling and it just his career took off. When I found myself like really gaining a lot of momentum in, up in Cincinnati riding, um, I kind of came to a crossroads where I had to decide whether I was going to get a real job or really try to chase after this dream and I jumped off the cliff. I moved down to Texas and got hungrier than I've ever been about anything in my whole life and just started sending it as far as working as hard as I could to film the best stuff I could, pump out content. I got picked up by Hyperlite. I started traveling even more. The red carpet was just getting rolled out for me anywhere I went. It was seriously like all way too good to be true. And then shit just hit the fan. You know, we as humans are just um, sometimes two, three, four clicks away from uh, spiraling. It's hard to know what to do for your adult child when they're out of your reach, but they seem like they need some kind of help.